So here's what I want to talk with you guys about today, is about the future of being human. Um, and so I'm going to start with uh, something from 1670, which is when, when Blaise Pascal noted that we are trapped between the scales of the infinitely large and the infinitely small. We're on this little strip in between, and he noted that um, you know, we have essentially as little understanding of both of those. Uh, we have as little understanding of the scales from which we emerge as we do of the infinity in which we are engulfed. So in other words, we're caught on this little strip in between, but the march of science since Pascal said that has only made the situation worse because it turns out that we don't see most of the information at our own spatial scales. So, for example, take something like electromagnetic radiation, or what we call visible light. Okay, so um, uh, electromagnetic radiation bounces off objects in the world. It strikes specialized cells at the back of our eyes. That sends electrical signals into the brain, and we interpret that as color. And this part of the electromagnetic spectrum we call visible light. But it turns out the part that we detect is about one ten trillionth of what's actually out there in terms of electromagnetic radiation. So gamma rays, x-rays, radio, television, all of these things are passing through your body and, and it's completely invisible to you. So National Public Radio is passing through your body right now. <laughs> it's the same stuff as what we call visible light, but it's totally invisible to you. Why? Because you don't have specialized receptors biologically for detecting that. So as far as you're concerned, it's not even there. Now this isn't true across the animal kingdom. You have different, different animals can pick up on slightly different windows. So for example, um, snakes can pick up on information in the infrared range and see in, in places that we can't see. And honeybees can pick up in the ultraviolet range. And of course we build machines to pick up on other pieces. That we build radios in the dashboards of our cars to pick up on the radio frequency range. We build machines in hospitals to pick up on the x-ray range and so on. But as far as you're concerned, all of that's invisible to you and no matter how hard you try, you're not going to pick up on those things by yourself biologically. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this means something really deep actually, straight away, which is that your experience of the world, what you're able to experience is totally delimited by your biology, by, by what you're coming to the table with. And I think this goes against the common sense view that our eyes and our ears and our fingers are picking up the objective reality out there. And that what we are sensing is, is the full objective reality out there. It turns out our brains are sampling just a small bit of the physical world out there. Um, and it turns out that this slice of reality that I just described for humans is not the same for all animals. It's different across the animal kingdom. So, for example, for the, in, in the blind and deaf world of the tick, the signals that it picks up from its environment are, are body temperature and, and the odor of butyric acid. That's, this, that's the environmental signals that the tick is picking up on. Um, for the glass knife ghost fish, the signals that it picks up on are electrical fields. It lives in darkness and it swims through the water and it picks up on electrical fields and disturbances in those fields and that's how it detects objects or, or other predators. For the blind echolocating bat, the slice of the world that it picks up on is air compression waves. As it echolocates, it gets these things bouncing back to them. That's its slice of reality. Now, there's a word for this. The slice of reality that you pick up on it's a German word introduced in 1908. It's called, it's called the Umwelt. And the idea with the Umwelt is that this is the part, oops, this is the part of their ecosystem that they're picking up on and presumably assuming that that is the entire objective reality out there, right? Because why would you ever assume otherwise? Whatever you're picking up on, you, we, we think is everything in reality. As an example of this, if you remember this uh, movie, The Truman Show, um, Truman is the main character and he's living in a world that's constructed around him on the fly by this intrepid uh, television producer. And in the movie, an interviewer goes to the television producer and says, why do you think that Truman has never picked up on the true nature of his reality? 
And the producer says, it's because we all accept the reality that's presented to us. And that's exactly right. And that's the situation that we're in too. We're picking up on a little slice of reality and we assume, like all animals presumably, that that is the entire objective reality. So let's do a quick consciousness raiser about this point. So I want you to consider for a moment, what is it like to be blind? Let's say you were born blind. Okay, is it like blackness? Is it like a hole where vision is supposed to be? If you think it's something like that, like blackness or a hole, then you're wrong. And, and here's why you're wrong. Um, so here's the consciousness razor. Imagine, imagine that you are a bloodhound dog and your entire world is about, is about scent. It's about olfaction. It's about smelling. So if you're this bloodhound dog, you have 200 million scent receptors in your long snout, and you have slits on the edges of your nostrils that allow you to uh, increase the airflow which you're able to bring in. Um, your floppy ears even uh, shake things up on the ground, stir things up so that you get even more scent molecules. Your entire world is about smelling, okay? Just try to picture what that's like. Now imagine that one day you're following your human master, and you stop in your tracks and you think, my gosh, what is it like to have the pitiful little nose of a human? <laughs> I wonder if there's blackness where smell is supposed to be or, or a hole that they feel like they're missing where scent is supposed to be. Now, because you're a human, you know that the answer to that is no. You don't miss that olfactory world of the bloodhound dogs because you're not used to it, you never think about it, you don't even really know that it's there. And so you don't miss it at all. And, and an analogy to this is people with color blindness. So people with color blindness, until they learn that other people see hues that they do not, it is impossible for them to imagine what that's like. They don't miss those colors, they never experienced those colors. Now if you have normal color vision, and at this moment, you're feeling pretty good about that. Just keep in mind that we now know that about 10% of the female population has not just three types of color photoreceptors in the back of their eye, but four types, which means they're tetrachromatic, which means they're seeing colors that the rest of us cannot see and cannot even conceive of. Now, this may explain some marital disputes that have happened, <laughs> but, but what this means is You've just discovered that you have an impoverishment in the sensory world that you didn't even, that you didn't even know about, but fundamentally, you don't miss it. You miss it only as much as, um, as a colorblind person misses colors or as, the, uh, as your human nose misses the sense of the bloodhound dog.